Thank you for coming today. I'm Attorney Gloria Allred, and with me is Ken Fox. And Ken will be making a statement um, after I make a brief statement. <clears throat> this morning, we filed a lawsuit on behalf of Ken Fox against Redmond O'Neill as a result of an unprovoked attack by Mr. O'Neill on Ken on May 2nd, 2018. Ken had never met, communicated with, or ever heard of Redmond O'Neill prior to encountering him on the day of this incident. Ken was simply walking to the laundromat with a hamper of clothes. While walking, Ken, who was a happy gay man and had studied opera, was singing to himself, what's new? That's a quote. As he walked, Redmond walked towards him and the two men briefly made eye contact. Ken alleges that Mr. O'Neill then stated to Ken, quote, what are you looking at, faggot, end quote. Ken further alleges that suddenly, without provocation, Mr. O'Neill struck Ken in the head with a bottle, causing Ken to fall to the ground. Ken also alleges that while he was down on the ground, injured and bleeding from the sudden attack, Redmond continued to throw punches at him and threaten him while shouting expletives at him, including you, and I'm not going to say the word, but it's effing faggot, crying like an effing baby, end quote. As a result of what Ken alleges that Redmond O'Neill said and did to him on the day of this incident, we filed a lawsuit this morning in L.A. County Superior Court alleging assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, violation of the Ralph Civil Rights Act, negligence, loss of consortium, and negligent infliction of emotional distress. We are seeking punitive damages and other damages according to proof at trial. The L.A. County District Attorney has also filed a criminal felony assault charge against Redmond O'Neill as a result of the unprovoked attack alleged by Ken. Any violent attack is serious, but an attack which appears to be motivated by the sexual orientation or perceived sexual orientation of the victim is of particular concern. In California, the Ralph Civil Rights Act, which is Civil Code Section 51.7, provides that, quote, all persons within the state of California have a right to be free from any violence or intimidation by threat of violence committed on his person on account of, without limitation, his sexual orientation, end quote. We contend in our lawsuit that a substantial motivating factor or reason for Redmond O'Neill's conduct towards Ken was Mr. O'Neill's perception of Ken's sexual orientation. The word faggot is clearly recognized as a derogatory and offensive homophobic slur against individuals who are perceived to be gay or who are gay. When gay men are vilified and denigrated in this way, it often leads to physical violence against them and physical as well as emotional injuries to them. The use of such a demeaning word followed by an attack is considered under the law to be vile, despicable, and contemptible, and in violations of the rights of a gay man. This is why we have filed this lawsuit today, and this is also the reason that Ken is willing to testify in the criminal case filed against Mr. O'Neill. There must be serious consequences for anyone who engages in violence against innocent victims, and particularly where the victim is victimized on account of his status as a member of a minority, which has long been in the history, had a history of persecution and violence against them on account of their sexual orientation. We demand justice for Ken and accountability in both the civil and the criminal justice system from Redmond O'Neill. And now I present Ken Fox. On May 2nd, 2018, Redmond O'Neill targeted me, called me a faggot, and beat me with a beer bottle. I was walking back and forth from a laundromat 
a block from my home, dragging a large hamper on wheels behind me. On my second trip back to the laundromat, I noticed a tall young man walking toward me from the direction of the laundromat. He was wearing a large hoodie and oversized jeans and holding a bottle wrapped in a paper bag. Mr. O'Neill looked at me and said, what are you looking at, faggot? And then viciously assaulted me. <sighs> I've spent the last four months recovering from what Redmond O'Neill did to me. I'm speaking out today because I need to do what I can to make sure this man never injures or hurts another defenseless faggot ever again. That's what Mr. O'Neill called me right before he sucker punched me. The word faggot is hate speech and just one of the many offensive terms used to make gay men feel ashamed of themselves. That's what Mr. O'Neill screamed at me as he rushed me and sucker punched me on the nose with a beer bottle and the fist that hit me. As I lay on the ground, he stood over me, taunting me, throwing punches and swinging that beer bottle inches from my face, preventing me from getting up to defend myself. Thanks. I felt trapped like a wounded animal. I literally thought I was going to die. I screamed. He called me more names. By then I was kneeling on the sidewalk, my broken glasses cutting into my face, bleeding all over myself, and all I could do was scream until he just walked away. Still I was terrified he would come back and kill me. When the pre police arrived, they found me standing in the laundromat next to my blood-covered towel and my blood-covered laundry basket. My own blood all over the floor and my laundry. Every night since this happened, I have nightmares about Mr. O'Neill attacking me. I've been unable to sleep, work, or be a good partner. I was an easy target for Mr. O'Neill's rage, hate, and anger. No one can imagine how helpless and angry this makes me feel. No one can understand how terrifying it is to be targeted and beaten because of hate, unless it has happened to them. I was not dressed provocatively. All I did was look up when I saw him approach me. I'm speaking out now to hold Mr. O'Neill accountable for calling me a faggot and beating me. He may be confident that he will not be punished for anything he's been accused of because his parents are famous. He may know exactly what to say and do to prevent justice from being served. He appears to be an unrepentant offender who has had his parole revoked for doing drugs in a rehabilitation center. In my opinion, he is competent enough to know exactly what he was doing. He wanted to hurt an old, weak, defenseless gay man. He wanted to hurt me, and he did hurt me. Mr. O'Neill broke my nose and gave me a whiplash concussion. He smashed my glasses into my face, cutting and bruising me. After three weeks of intense pain, I had to have my nose rebroken and reset by a doctor. I'm seeing a neurologist for headaches, cognitive issues, and nerve damage. I'm being treated by an orthopedic surgeon for neck and back pain. I've been to an orthodontist for tooth and gum pain. I've seen an ophthalmologist for cornea damage. I'm going to physical therapy three times a week. I still have headaches, and I'm being, I've been diagnosed with PTSD and will need to seek more medical treatment. I'm seeing a psychologist for counseling to help me put my life back together after this brutal attack. Hopefully, I will get justice. I am not from privilege, and I have worked hard for a good life. And I am passionate about making sure he doesn't do this to anyone else. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, we'll take at some questions, and I think all of you have a copy of the lawsuit which we filed this morning. Do you okay. believe this should have been filed by the DA as a hate crime? We don't have any comment on that right now. But we're glad that there's a felony filing 
<clears throat> we are awaiting a hearing date. There is no hearing date yet. There's some appearance dates, but no hearing date yet. But we expect there to be a hearing this fall. On this particular attack? Yes. And also on the other attack or the alleged attack that happened during the same day or days. Who is the other individual named as a plaintiff on your suit? Uh, that is the partner, the registered partner of uh, Ken Fox. And can you give more details on what you're asking in the suit? <clears throat> well, in terms of the theories or the damages? damages. Well, we're asking for general compensatory and punitive damages according to proof at trial. And the Ralph Civil Rights Act, which I cited, does allow for punitive damages if there is proof at trial. Do you have a number? No. We don't have a number because we want to leave that to the jury to decide after hearing all the evidence. And in addition, Ken is still treating so we don't have a number on what his damages are going to be at this time since he's still being treated by health care professionals. Did, did Remino O'Neill appear to be under the influence at the time of this attack? Uh, I mean, I think that's not for Ken to be able to determine whether he was under the influence or not. But uh, I will say that's, you know, there was a point at which he was taken into custody so my sense is that law enforcement would be able to answer that question. Uh, and it will not also surprise me if his defense attorney uh, seeks to uh, respond on that issue. But even assuming only for purposes of discussion that Mr. O'Neill was under the influence of either alcohol or a controlled substance or both, uh, that is not going to be a defense to his, con to his c conduct or alleged misconduct towards Mr. Fox. Ms. Arnett, if he were to be found mentally... I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. If he were to be found mentally incompetent during this review that's now underway on the criminal side, how would that affect your civil case? Uh, well, since we just filed the lawsuit today, we don't know whether he will raise that as an issue or a defense later uh, in the case. But, uh, I mean, we'll have to wait and see what he, what he raises as an issue. I mean, the question, mental competency can come into play. Is he mentally competent to stand trial? If he is mentally competent to stand trial, was he mentally competent when he did what he's alleged to have done? I, I can't tell you. I, I, from our point of view and from Ken's point of view, he feels, in his opinion, which is not a medical opinion but a lay opinion, that Mr. O'Neill is competent, but we'll have to see. Um, what was Mr. Fox doing for a living before all this happened? Uh, do you wish to state or not? It's up to you. Because it's relevant for in, in a civil uh -huh. suit. Do you wish to state or not? What he's lost. Oh, I, I have been working for the last several years to uh, as an actor, and I have also been supplement, sub, supplementing my income uh, bartending. Do you remember when you screamed back at him for going in your defense? I did scream at him, yes. Do you remember why? I'd rather not say. Uh, what made him stop? Did he just decide that you'd had enough, or did somebody intervene? I uh, want to go back to singing for a living, and I rehearse two or three hours a day and sing very loudly. Whatever. No, he, she's saying oh, what? what caused him to cease oh. attacking you while you were on the ground. Because I was so loud, I was attracting attention. 
I, I don't know why he stopped attacking me, but I was making a lot of noise. With all due respect to your um, claims, if you were, if the, if the perpetrator was not famous, uh, or rather the son of famous parents, would that have any bearing on the fact that A, that you filed the lawsuit, it's all right, and that B, that you're going after him when he clearly has no means? Well, number one, everyone and anyone is responsible for their conduct, and if they uh, hurt another person, commit a tort or a crime or both against another person, then they are responsible for the injuries, the damages that they have inflicted as a result of their wrongful and or criminal conduct. And children of celebrities do not get a pass. They do not get a special license to hurt or injure another person uh, because they are a child of celebrities. Uh, no one is above the law. No one is beneath the law. Everyone must obey the law and be responsible for their conduct or misconduct. So whether or not, to address the second part of your question, he has any assets or means to satisfy a judgment, we, we will not opine on that at this time. But... Uh, we feel there's a, a definitely a basis for us to proceed with this lawsuit, and that's why we are doing it, because we want justice both in the civil and the criminal justice system. And if his name was not a name that is well known under the circumstances, we would still proceed. He has to be made accountable, and this is as I say, particularly egregious because of the words that he is alleged to have used, um, which is a deep concern not only to Ken, but I'm sure to many persons in the gay and lesbian community. This is why in California we have specific laws that make a person accountable for injuring someone on account of their sexual orientation, if that can be proven. So excuse my ignorance on legal process, but is it unusual for a civil suit to be filed prior to the adjudication of the criminal charge? Fair question. And the answer is there is no bar or prohibition against filing a civil lawsuit while a criminal case is pending. Often we await the outcome of a criminal case prior to filing a civil lawsuit, but it is not required that we await the outcome of a criminal case prior to filing a civil lawsuit. Both can proceed concurrently, and we will see what happens. And let me just ask you, Mr. Fox, um, in light of the, the tenor of this lawsuit, are you hoping that perhaps this civil suit will then uh, influence the criminal charge, perhaps elevating the charge? Well, Mr. Fox has no, uh, has no way of having an impact on the criminal case. It is filed as a felony, not as a misdemeanor. Um, and we'll see whether or not at any point there is either an additional charge or an issue of sentence enhancement or not. But he's satisfied that a felony was charged, and we'll see. We'll see what happens next. But, Kirk, me if I'm wrong, before today, was there much said about the hate speech that was used in the attack? Uh, no. And why do you suppose that is? Pardon me? Why do you suppose that is? You know, I, I, we don't want to comment on this at, that, at this time, but that is a question that will be answered at a later point. That but clearly, 
clearly it was a part of your original complaint, was it not? Yeah. Well, we're not going to we're not going to go into what was said to law enforcement, okay. but Mr. Fox is in contact with law enforcement with the district attorney's office. So, are, are you saying that potentially he did not report this to the officers? Well, we're not going to comment on what was said to the police officers and or the detective or the district attorney's office. Okay. Obviously, they feel that they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a crime was committed, and that's why they charged a felony right. I'm assault. Just, yeah. And any other question in reference to this will be answered at another point in this process. Okay. I'm just trying to square this. Because you're talking about the Ralph Act, you're talking about the hate, the language, and, and his rights as, as a gay man. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it also seems that because it was not filed as a hate crime, this was not an element of the investigation at all. And you can't. Well, I can't comment on what's an element of the investigation at this time. I, I don't know how many men were attacked, and I don't know if the ans if if the number is five or not five, mm -hmm. and I have not spoken to any of the other persons who allege that they are victims. Anything else? Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>